There is so much stuff to do in the Lost Caverns of Ixalan. I want to make sure that you guys dominate your next draft. So please stay tuned for 10 really helpful tips for your next draft. Maybe the most important thing right away is for you to get on the board early. If you're an aggressive deck, maybe you're playing some kind of blue-white flyers, Spyglass Siren is a great one drop to get on the board early and make a map token. Even if you're a defensive blue-white deck, you still want to play something like the Market Gnome. You need to be on board you know, in turn one or turn two. If you don't do anything until turn three, I think you're definitely falling behind. So make sure you get on the board early and start your game plan. All right, so naturally, if you're going to get on the board early, you want to have good cards early, right? So that means that when you're drafting, you want to prioritize your low drops early in the draft, right? If you see something that's, you know, reasonable power level between a two drop and a four drop, take the two mana value creature. You're going to be happy. You're going to be able to play it earlier. And I feel like there's kind of a choke point. It's really easy to get four drop creatures. So make sure you prioritize your low mana value creatures early in the draft. I think you'll be happy. Another reason to get on the board early is there's plenty of mana sinks in this format. There's so much stuff to do with your mana. So if you play a two drop, like the Tendril of the Micro Tyrant, well, it's got a mana sink later, right? You can pay seven and put seven plus one plus one counters on a land. If you play something like Idol of the Deep King for removal, well, it's got a craft ability and you can flip it and turn it into a weapon. So another reason to play early you know, mana value things, early mana value creatures, artifacts, spells, because there's so much stuff to do with your mana. You can craft later, you can sink mana into activated abilities. So get started early and then use that mana later in the game all right, to maybe pump something, maybe use an activated ability, maybe craft. All right, get started early. This format is super mana hungry. All right, so these two two drops, we've got the Volatile Wonder Glyph and the Ten of Summon Scribe. I feel like these are cousins or something. They're these two two drops that just really give you a lot of value every time they turn sideways. So the Volatile Wonder Glyph, you get a chance to rummage, and then the Sun Scribe lets you scry. I just have this, you know, in my head, I've called these guys value buddies. I really like these two drops in some kind of white or red you know, aggressive deck or tap deck, I think you're going to be really happy with these two value buddy two drops. All right. So when I did my map to victory video, I took a look at these two kind of families. You have this Jeskai artifact family and you have this kind of soul tide descend family. And I think early on what we've seen is that the artifact family is greater than the descend family. I think I'd rather be in this red, white, and blue kind of artifact affect the board, just dump artifacts onto the board. Um, it's been more impressive than the Descend decks. Now, um, I've definitely lost to some Descend decks. I've played some Descend decks. They've been okay. Um, but I think if I had to choose, I'd rather be in this kind of Jeskai wedge, making artifacts, than the Sultai wedge, and doing the Descend thing. Another wedge that wasn't initially obvious to me, but now kind of is, is this Naya Beatdown wedge. So we've got red-green dinosaurs. We've got green-white kind of pump your things. That seems to be really strong. And then you've got your white, red, really aggressive decks. So, you know, I think a kind of hidden wedge in the Lost Caverns of Hixalon is your Naya Beatdown Wedge. It sounds like people have been having a lot of success with that. Maybe give this a shot if you're looking to just affect the board, turn creatures sideways, and slam with big things. All right, so sometimes you got to figure out, should we run Artifact Hate main deck? If I'm playing best of one draft, should I run Artifact Hate main deck? And I think these two, Over the Edge and the Deconstruction Hammer, are totally fine to run main deck. Over the edge, if you don't have an artifact to, to kill, well then you can just explore a couple times and the deconstruction hammer is just good early. It's pretty easy to pay one and then give your thing plus one, plus one, like short sword is fine. And then it just takes out an artifact. And sometimes it can be a really big and meaningful artifact. So I like both of these. Don't be afraid to run them um, in main decks, uh, especially in best of one. All right, so I have absolutely been getting wrecked by the Dire Flail. It seems like every other game I play against this thing, this is amazing. Um, this kind of reminds me of when I did the uh, Wilds of Eldrain pre-release. I saw Gruff Triplets for the first time, and I had to ask, is that really what the card does? And a flip Dire Flail going into the Dire Blunderboss, I had to be like, wow, this thing is amazing. So... I also had an opponent attach a diamond pick axe at the same time they had the flipped dire flail. And so what it was doing was it was splitting out, spitting out a token, and then they were using the, the dire blunderboss to then sack the token 
and then deal damage to me. So this is a nice little combo. If you can get the synergy working, um, I saw it, it completely wrecked me and just wanted to call out this nice little synergy. So I'm still kind of figuring out the descend decks, but it seems to me that if you're going to draft these, you need to get your payoffs first and then your enablers. Um, I kind of drafted a green, black, mid rangey value descend deck. And I think I prioritized the enablers before I got the payoffs and it just didn't really work the way I wanted it to. So I think you want to prioritize your defossilize, your really good payoffs, then get your enablers. All right, so the very first draft that I did was a white black sacrifice deck. And I think this ha really has a place in the format. So I was able to make a ton of tokens using things like the Tinker's Tote, the Clay Fire Bricks. Uh, Bartolome is just absolute house. I had a time where an opponent just didn't block him and I was able to sack like eight things and just push through nine damage to, to win the game. And then if you have a bunch of tokens running around, you can use this abysmal Gore Stalker just to almost double edict your opponent, right? Make them sacrifice two things. And if you're sacrificing tokens, then generally you're really okay with that trade. That leaves you a 6-6, six, six, it kills two of their creatures. Um, so I think the white-black sack deck really has a place in this format. I'm excited to keep drafting this, but try this out. I've seen a lot of artifacts, seen a lot of descend, but this almost seems to be this kind of outlier deck, but I think it can be really good. If you've gotten value out of this video and you want to see more draft tips and draft videos, be sure to subscribe. Make sure you click like and subscribe, and that way you don't miss any of the action as we bring you coverage on the Lost Caverns of Ixalan.